Hello, this is Michelle Geomatics welcoming you to another free training video. This one on how to create a binary suitability model in GIS. Let's say about opening a new cafe in Tucson. The data we'll be using include existing Tucson cafes, which are the bright blue points, the streets, and I want to draw your attention to the dark black streets. Those are my major streets. They're symbolized by their FCC code, and the major streets have a value of A31 or A35. And then the block group data is the census data, which is currently symbolized for counts of the population between 20 and 24. So I get a general sense of where my hotspots are. So let's add a new field to this block group so I can look at the percentages of the population that meets my target um, age group instead of just raw counts. So I'll go ahead and open the attribute table and add a new field and I'll just call it uh, percent 24 and we'll have it store a floating value. And if I scroll over, I should be able to see that that field has been added. We'll populate it using the field calculator outside of an edit session. And I'm going to create a little formula here that will be the age group that I'm interested in. So the age group of 20 to 24. We'll divide that by the total population. And then we'll multiply that by 100 to turn it into a percentage. All right, so it's populated for me. I'll go ahead and sort this in ascending order, and I can see the range of my values. So what I want to do now is actually symbolize these data based on that new field instead of the field that it is uh, currently, which is just the count. So let's specify graduated colors, but using the percent %24. And we'll go ahead and accept those defaults and it kind of narrows in a little bit closer uh, where the population that I'm interested in is. So in this case the red polygons are where my target population represents between let's say 39 and 70 percent of the population. Okay so that takes care of my block groups. And now let's export out the ones that I'm really interested in. So I'm interested in the ones where the population is greater than 20 percent so let's come in and do a select by attributes and I'll select from the block group and we'll find my new field percent 24 where it's greater than 20 percent. So it grabs those few values and I really do want to focus on this area which is right around the university but I see there's one polygon that's kind of um, off here by itself so I just want to deselect that one polygon. So I'll use the Select Features tool holding down the Shift key and just deselect that one. And now I'm going to export these data into a new feature class. So I have my Tucson Cafe feature class and I'm going to call this one my Target Pop. Okay, so I'll just add it to my map so I have my target population. Clear those selected features. And the next thing I want to do is work with the roads. So I'm going to select the major roads and then buffer them by 0.2 miles. So we can go ahead and uh, do this in many different ways. So I'll start off by selecting the ones I'm interested in. So let's go select by attributes and I'll work with the streets this time and I've already identified I want to find the ones that have an FCC value that's equal to A31 or A35. So I'll just create a little SQL statement here. So FCC equals A31 or FCC equals A35. And now I want to buffer these major roads. So I'll go to Geoprocessing, Buffer. My input features are going to be the roads. And because I have selected features, it will only look at those. And the distance that we indicated was 0.2 miles. 
and I want to dissolve these. So I'll choose to dissolve and let's give that a try. Okay, so I end up with these big buffers that represent 0.2 miles around these major roads. The next thing I want to do is buffer the existing cafes by 1500 feet. So let's open up the buffer tool again. This time the input feature will be cafes and we'll put it in the same geodatabase where everything else is going and we're buffering by 1500 feet this time and let's go ahead and run that. Okay so I've got now my buffers. Let's change the color on the cafe buffer so it doesn't get confusing with uh, block groups. So we have different colors for everything. So the purple polygons represent my target population. Those are places that do work. The blue buffers from the lines represent places that do work. I want to be close to a major road. And then the pink circle buffers represent places that don't work. I'd like to be outside of 1500 feet of existing cafes. So what we're going to do here are a couple of steps. And remember there's lots of different ways to approach this. The way that I'm doing it is not the only way. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to do an overlay, an intersect overlay between the population, so the purple polygons, and the buffered roads. So that way I'll have uh, where those two intersect. Those will be places that do work for that purpose. So let's come into our toolbox and find the intersect tool in the overlay tool set. And there's our intersect. So we're going to intersect our buffered streets and we're going to intersect with our target population. Okay, let's go ahead and run that one. And I end up with the place where those guys intersect. So I can turn off the roads and the target population. And so I've narrowed down my possible locations. Now I have one more thing I need to do and that is do another overlay, this time an erase I'm going to erase from these blue polygons the pink circles because the pink circles are places that do not work. So let's choose the erase tool. My input features are going to be the pop roads and the erase features are going to be the Tucson Cafe buffers which we called Cafe Buff. And we'll go ahead and put it in the same geodatabase and this is going to be called Best Locations. Alright, let's see if that's going to work for us. Okay, so we've got our Best Locations polygons. I'm going to turn off everything except that layer and that shows us our Best Location. So these are the locations that I would target. So I could start looking for available buildings and try to find a place to build my cafe. Thanks so much for watching. Do you or your organization require GIS or GPS training? You won't find a better quality training at a better price than with Geomatics. Contact us for more information.